Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Glad you could stop by. Folks, my name is Todd. If you're new here, Three Days Away is our new travel and tinkering DIY and off-roading channel along with Sassy. Our main channel is Greenhorn Barbecue and Beer, so I'm glad you took the time to stop over here and visit us. So we just got back a week ago from camping up in the Mammoth, Mono County area, and we took the Razor and our Attitude Toy Hauler, and we did about three or four hours of break-in time on the trails up there. It was pretty dry, pretty dusty, and one of the things that's recommended by many people, and I think the factory, I'm not sure, is once you're done with that first initial ride, to remove that clutch cover, blow it out, and kind of do a quick inspection. So that's what we're gonna to do today. In addition to that, I'm gonna take out the paper element air filter, blow it out, inspect it, put it back, and just give everything a once over on the machine, checking the lug nuts on the tires, uh, various bolts here and there, and just kind of give it a, a once or two. So my previous video obviously was us washing this for the first time. That's definitely a excellent thing to do before you start working on the machine. Uh, give it a washing, and that way you know you don't you're not working through all this mud and dirt. All right, guys. A lot of channels uh, will lift the rear end, uh, taking pressure off the shock and the uh, control arm. Uh, they remove the rear tire wheel uh, and to give you better access to the uh, clutch cover, belt cover. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to see if I can get this off, uh, you know, without any heavy tools here. Um, there's about nine screws that are pretty much just hand tight holding on that plastic cover. Uh, I'm using 5 sixteenths to get those off. And then there's a quarter inch uh, hose clamp holding that air duct on. I'm just going to be disconnecting it from there, pushing it out of the way taking off the nine screws, holding that on, and I'm just kind of fish it out. All right, guys. So I got one screw that I dropped down in there. Uh, never fear, I got some uh, a magnet. There we go, guys. Woo! Okay. All right. Yeah. Saw a little bit of that dirt already. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Now, from here, you know, um, maybe I do need to uh, lift the tire up uh, and undo the lower shock mount, move it out of the way. If I was replacing the primary, secondary clutches, um, but you know, I'm just going to push this aside. I think it's just perfect for an inspection. Um, so let's go ahead and blow this up. Hi guys, I turned the uh, secondary clutch forward, um, I'm inspecting all these teeth, um, looking for any uh, debris or anything like that, uh, major cuts, anything. Um, it's looking pretty good, you know, obviously this has only got about a uh, total of four or five hours on it, um, mostly break in time. Uh, running in low and toward the last hour or so, uh, maybe last two hours. Running in high, and I think I only got it up to 55 miles an hour max. Uh, I haven't noticed any belt slippage uh, or uh, clutch slippage. Um, everything seems to be working okay. Not sure what these blue marks are here on the clutch um, and whether my clutch uh, was fixed because I know there was a technical bulletin out. Um, I did buy this about two months ago. Um, it was recently delivered from Polaris, maybe three months ago, uh, which would uh, put that back in... Um, probably in the March time frame. So I hope it was uh, fixed. Um, if not, if I uh, discover any uh, clutch slippage, you know, I'll, I'll report to you guys. 
and then we reinstall everything in the reverse order. Uh, I don't think I need to show you how to do that. That's pretty simple. So let's move on to the air cleaner. And when you have everything back together, it should look just like it did before you started dorking with it. Okay, to get the air filter out, it's pretty easy. Uh, this cover here, you just kind of pull up there and set aside. And then you have the cover here. Now, um, these are pretty easy, no tools required. You just flip up these little clips. There's four of them. Just make sure they're clear of the housing. There you go. And then just uh, pull it off. There we go. Okay, this little wire is uh, from my uh, rock lights. I just kind of ran it on the top, so that's nothing. Okay, so there's the air filter housing. Um, you can see here, definitely dirt coming in. Okay, um, the air filter intake is right there, and where the uh, clutch intake is right there. So, no clamps on this. You just uh, uh, twist it and pull off. But, you know, before I do that, I'm going to blow it out here a little bit. All right, so the reason I blew it out um, is uh, I don't want to wait till it's out to start wiping it down. I just want any uh, obvious big chunks to come out of there. So now I'm just going to really gently pull it out. There we go. Okay, so I just take a little bit of air. Um, I don't hold it too close because I don't want to damage any of this paper here. Don't hold it in one place. Just kind of do some passes. And um, there's still a little bit of dust on this. There kind of tell. Now do this away from your car so you don't get that dust back into the intake track. There you go. Now just check it for any defects, cracks, or anything like that. Replace it as necessary. Again, this ring, don't lose it. Keeps this from getting deformed. Keeps it kind of tight. And uh, then reinstall. Now before I reinstall, I'm going to take a uh, cotton rag, damp with a little bit of water, and I'm just going to give it kind of a wipe down. Uh, I'm just kind of doing this to make myself feel good. Not sure if it's necessary. It's just going to get dirty on the first ride again. But this helps you inspect for any kind of cracks or, or something that really shouldn't be in there, you know, critters and such. Again, don't wipe that grease off. That helps seal it. And then you just reinsert the air filter. Give it a twist and push. There you go. That's all there is to it. And then to replace this door, you just get started at the top, all right, so that you can rotate it or pivot it. And then bring it down, lift, and push. Make sure that's seated. So before we went camping, I installed these lighted fang lights here. Oh, looks like they went off. There you go. They uh, they look pretty cool. Um, I only bought the front, and uh, as a bonus, I'm going to show you here uh, how to install the rear one. All right, right off the bat, uh, I'm going to admit that this is not a Polaris, genuine Polaris product. Um, it's about half that price. Um, it does have the correct uh, fittings. Uh, this is all it comes with. Um, and uh, it's supposed to be brake light and running light. Um, got it for a song, eBay special. And it's going to replace this cheesy factory block off plate here that uh, doesn't do anything but look dorky. So let's get started. All right, guys. So I think the only tools you're going to need is this T40 Torx uh, with the driver of your choice. Um, there's just a few of these uh, T40 uh, Torx uh, fittings, uh, a couple under the bottom. Um, that you got to take out, um, loosen up or, or take out this middle one here. Uh, and then what's actually holding the um, light bezel on are these stamped nuts. And uh, we're using a, uh, let's see, 7 16 deep socket uh, for these because uh, the shaft is kind of long. So um, let's get started. Uh, 
cable already connected to it. See that? So just kind of pop it there as best you can. And then come in with your, uh, your 7 16 and uh, carefully remove these stamp nuts. comes out and uh, discard it. Okay, now I'll try to get a good shot of this. Now, you might want to blow this out. The factory doesn't cover this up when they leave this dongle just sitting here uh, like that. So uh, just make sure there's no uh, crud in there. Uh, mine's brand new. I've only ridden it once in the dirt. So it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up. Install. And now I'm going to go ahead and put these stamp nuts back on here and get them started. Nice and tight. And then you can see this is uh, this bracket here. Make sure you still have it. And there's a corresponding little tab on that. I'm just plug it in. There you go. Okay. Now, make sure your little things are back in the right spot. And slip everything back up where it belongs. All right, guys, I did a really poor job showing you where all these uh, screw locations are, these T40 torques. There's one right there that's got to come off. Then there's one on the bottom there and one on the bottom there. So there's two on the bottom, one right there, one right here by the flag hole. So right there. Um, keep that center one kind of on there till the very last minute. Uh, then there's a second one right by the flag, uh, and then of course that one right there. I screwed up and I, I took the other side of that bracket off and it fell, but not a big deal. It fits back very easily. So uh, I'm going to get all these hand tight and then I'm just going to really kind of torque them down by hand. But already that back end looks so much better. Check it out guys. Now before we get started uh, tightening up the screws, I'm going to turn this on and make sure it works. All right, guys, that wasn't bad at all. That was my first time taking off that clutch cover and inspecting the belt. I've got a little bit of belt experience from Harleys. You know, they've been using drive belts for years. This, although different, the principle is the same. Inspect it, keep it clean, replace when necessary, and be ready for when it goes on you and you really have to replace it in the field. All the tools I use today are kept in my toolbox in the razor so that if it happens on a trail, I can get the job done. And I hope you enjoyed that quick little upgrade on the tail light. I think it looks pretty cool. Can't wait to see it at night. So guys, thanks again for stopping by. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. That's all we ask. And that you say hello down in the comments. And we'll see you again soon.